Are you tired of only earning $100,000 per year? Or are you just curious about how software engineers can afford so much avocado toast? Or was this video suggested to you and then you stepped away for a bit, now you're outside of the room and you're not even watching this video anymore and it's just whatever. Regardless of how you got to this video though, in this video, I'm going to share three strategies for how you can earn $450,000 per year on a consistent basis. And if you smash the like button and stick around until the end of the video, I might have a fourth strategy that is just for you. Also, my lawyers have just informed me that I cannot say consistently. So, you know, random guy on the internet, take this advice with a grain of salt, but hopefully you learn some stuff. With that out of the way, let's get into it. The first way is to teach people how to program. The best time for you to start putting together a course was 20 years ago. The second best time to start doing that is right now. I'm not going to talk about how much people make from course sales, but it's kind of in the ballpark that we're talking about depending on size of audience. And even if the course isn't a hit, you still have YouTube revenue, podcast revenue, sponsored video revenue, mailing list revenue, other streams of revenue because the only reason that people are going to buy your course is because you are well known and well respected. So you're going to have other streams of income just by proxy of being able to have so much income from a course. Which gets into the next part about how would you actually go about doing it? Well, I would recommend starting a YouTube channel and just giving away that content for free. You're going to make really bad videos for the first 100 uploads. You don't need to charge that. It's kind of your way of being able to practice, but also build up a community at the same time. Then once you have an established audience, you're probably looking at around 50 to 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. You can start thinking about making a paid course and there's a bunch of platforms out there. You have things like Teachable, Podia, Gumroad, could use Skillshare even. And then when the course is ready to launch, you just announce it to your YouTube following, but there's also some other strategy that you can use to make it a little bit more effective. Along with your YouTube videos, you can be publishing stuff to TikTok, so building up a community that's off of YouTube. You could also write Medium articles to break down your technical videos into Word form. Medium also has a publisher program, so you can make some money through that as well. You could also start up a podcast, build up an audience that way. Creating a mailing list is probably one of the best kept secrets. For a while, I worked for an email marketing company and it's just astonishing how many companies can just go full time just because of their mailing list. So seriously, I know you're probably just like swiping away and archiving all of the emails that you get, but it actually does drive a significant amount of revenue to a lot of people. If you're feeling risky, you could also use Twitter. No idea how long it's going to be around for. People are building businesses off of their Twitter following as well. You could also create a Discord community. And if you are wondering, yes, I have all of these things that I've already mentioned except for a podcast. Maybe one day I will start one, but that's gonna be a little while. Another way that you can earn $450,000 per year, and it would definitely be on a consistent basis, is to become a programmer. Yeah, I mean, I have to mention this one. If you've watched any of my software salary videos, you know that programmers can make a lot of money if they're working for larger tech companies or smaller tech companies that become bigger and then their equity just goes crazy. If you haven't watched that series or just need a refresher, essentially the way that software engineers earn money is their base salary, bonus, and RSUs. But really the RSUs are the most important part of your compensation package because They'll start off being kind of meaningless if you're a junior engineer or earlier on in your career. As you continue to progress, you will notice that your base salary doesn't progress as quickly as those RSUs do. Typically, you can expect your base salary to cap out between $150,000 and $250,000 per year. There are some cases where it can go higher than that, but those are going to be more niche scenarios and not kind of like across the board salaries. But then it's not uncommon to see equity grants be worth $100,000 a year, $200,000 a year, a million dollars a year. It really just depends on when you joined the company, how that equity has increased in value over time. There's also the risk that can decrease in value over time, but I'm not gonna buzz kill this video. If you are interested in which companies to spend some time trying to get into, I recommend checking out levels.fyi. They have a ton of great salary information. Once you figure out which companies you wanna go and try to work for, I recommend 
preparing for these interviews and over preparing. So you should be comfortable with leak code questions, even if you may not be asked leak code questions. It's always better to over prepare than to under prepare, especially with leak code. You might learn a thing or two that's actually going to be useful in your job. Most likely you won't, but you never know. You might. I got to use a linked list for the first time in 10 years. So, hey, anything is possible. System design prep will also be an important thing. There's various videos out there on YouTube. So just search for that. See if that helps you out. Um, I forget their exact name, but I'll leave a link to their channel below. They don't upload videos anymore, but their content is phenomenal and it is evergreen. So it's not out of date at all. But then after that, you have your interview, you get hired. Simple as that, right? I mean, not really. It, it'll take many years to get to that point, but eventually you can and will get there if you are determined enough and don't burn out. The third way to earn $450,000 or more per year is to start a company. This is potentially the fastest and slowest way to get there because you can start a company that takes off pretty quickly and then you're just rolling in the cash or you could start a company that takes years of building up and then eventually this flywheel just starts rolling and you just start making a lot of money. You do have to keep in mind though that being a full stack developer is not enough for this. You really have to be a full stack person in order to start a solo company. This means that you are a full stack engineer but you're also a product manager slash thought person. You are the head of marketing. You are also the chief of design and human resources to yell at yourself when you say something stupid. And while this might take a lot of work and it might take a lot of time to be able to make a living from having your own company, it's also the one where the sky is really the limit. And there are really a variety of things that you can build as a software engineer, building your own company. The one that I think makes the most sense for a lot of people is going with a SaaS company, so software as a service. I'm a little biased because most of the companies that I've worked for are SaaS companies, so it's just something that I understand better. But the nice thing about those is you earn a pretty consistent amount of revenue, and to grow the revenue, you just need to get more people to pay for the product. Of course, there's other options out there too. You can be like an indie app developer, you can be an indie game developer, you can be a indie freelance person that just makes websites for people. You wanna keep in mind that you don't wanna trade your time for money with starting a business. You really want to just sell some sort of a product that can be sold to a million people that takes the same amount of time for you to build it once as opposed to you know that freelance route might be a little bit more difficult to make a lot of money, but you'll still live pretty comfortable. So those were a few ways you could earn $450,000 or more per year as a software engineer. But I did promise if you stuck around until the end of the video, I would give you a bonus strategy. So if none of those three options sounds good for you, then perhaps overemployment would be for you. Go check out this video next. It will tell you exactly what you need to do to become overemployed. And that's it. That's the video.